In this video, we're going to be implementing player rotation. Before we start coding, I want to show you what happens when we rotate an image. So if I rotate this image clockwise, then what happens is the surface gets bigger and you can see that there's additional transparent background. And this is a destructive process because the output surface contains new image data. And the important thing to uh, remember when we're rotating images uh, in our code is that we need to keep track of the original input data, which is this image right here. And I'm going to call this base player image in my code. And if we don't keep track of this, then we're going to get all sorts of weird glitches like the player flying off the screen. So the solution is to save the input surface, which is this base player image. And we want to generate the rotated versions from this surface. Okay, so now we're back in our code and the first thing I want to do is create our base player image. So underneath this image variable, I'm going to type self dot base underscore player underscore image equals self dot image. So this is our original uh, player's image. And the next thing I want to do is create our rect attributes. So a rectangle is basically what we're going to use for checking for collisions between objects in our game. So to create a rectangle, first I'm going to create a hitbox rectangle. So self dot hitbox underscore rect equals self dot base play image dot get underscore rect and we want to set the center to the position of the player so self dot center equals self dot pots so now we've created our hitbox rect and I'll show you what this looks like later um, but we also want to create our rect um, variable as well and to do this we're going to write self dot rect equals self dot hitbox underscore rect dot copy and the reason we need these two rectangles is because this first rectangle is going to be used for checking for collisions between different objects in our game. And the second one is for actually drawing the player onto the screen. Now let's go ahead and create a new function for the player's rotation. So I'm going to create a new function def player underscore rotation. And it will take self as its argument. And the first thing that we need to do is think about how we're going to rotate our player on the screen using angles and a little bit of maths. Okay, so let's have a quick look at a demonstration to see how we are going to rotate the player. So let's say this is a player's position and he has an X and a Y coordinate of let's say 10 and 20. And let's say this is the mouse cursor on the screen. So let's say it has a position of 30 and 40. So what we need to do is we need to figure out the angle between these two points. So we need to calculate this angle. And to do that, we can use a little bit of trigonometry. So this is opposite the angle. So O, this is adjacent to the angle, and this is the hypotenuse. And we can see that we have opposite and adjacent. So we can use tan. So tan theta equals opposite over adjacent. To calculate the opposite, we need to find out the difference in the y values between these two uh, points. So 40 take away 20. And to work out the adjacent, we need to find the difference in the x value. So we need to do 30 take away 10. And if we do that, we get 20 over 20, which is just 1. And if we do the inverse tan of 1, then we get 45 degrees. So that means that this angle is 45 degrees. So the player has to be rotated 45 degrees. The first thing we want to do in our function is get the mouse coordinates. So I'll just type self dot mouse underscore chords equals pi game dot mouse dot get underscore pods. And this is a built in uh, method with uh, that comes with pi game. And it just gets the x and the y value of the mouse. So the next thing we want to do is get the difference, so the difference in the x values between the play and the mouse and the difference in the y values between the play and the mouse. So I'm going to call these variables self dot x underscore change underscore mouse underscore player. And I'll create another uh, variable for the y change. And if you want a little challenge, go ahead and try to calculate um, these variables. So finish these statements off. For the x change, what I'll type is self dot mouse underscore chords and then square brackets to zero minus self dot hitbox underscore rec dot center x and I'll just copy this down for the y change now I'll replace this zero with one and here instead of center x we'll use center y now we're ready to calculate the angle so to do that I'll type self dot angle equals math dot degrees 
uh, brackets math dot a tan two, and inside here I'll type self dot y underscore change underscore mouse underscore player comma self dot x underscore change underscore mouse underscore player. So what this line does is first it converts this angle to degrees, and that's because later on we're going to use the transform dot rotate method, and that requires us to have the angle in degrees and not radians. Uh, next, we just use the a tan2 method and we pass in the two variables that we declared earlier. Okay, so now we're finally ready to rotate the player's image. So I'll just type self.image equals pygame.transform.rotate. And inside here, we it's very important that you rotate the base player image. So self.base player image. And we want to rotate it by the angle. But don't forget the minus sign at the front of it because. Um, otherwise, you'll be rotating in the opposite direction. So just to make sure you're rotating in the correct direction, have a minus sign in front. And the last thing we need to do is center our player's rectangle onto the hit, the rectangle of the hitbox. So the rectangle of the hitbox is smaller than the player's rectangle. And I'll show you what these rectangles look like in a moment. But first, let's type self.rect equals self.image.get underscore rect. And inside brackets, type center equals self.hitbox underscore rect dot center. So there's a slight mistake earlier in our code. So over here, we have the self dot pause variable. And what we need to do is we need to move this up before here, because what we're trying to do is we're trying to um, use it before we've created it. So let's replace this. Uh, let's cut that and put it up here. And next, we need to update our move function uh, to use the new rectangles that we created. So, so far, we're just updating the position of the uh, the position variable, but what we need to do is we need to update where the rectangles are centered. So first, I'll type self dot hitbox underscore rect dot center equals self dot pause, and next we want to center the other rectangle. So self dot rect dot center, and we'll center this inside the hitbox. So self dot hitbox underscore rect dot center. So earlier I mentioned that we are using this um, rectangle here to blit the player onto the screen. So that's what we're going to do now. So I'm going to go down to my while loop. And here we have this line here saying screen.blit player.image player.pause. But instead of blitting it at the position, we just split it at the position of the rectangle. So I'll replace this with player.rect. And one last thing that I forgot to do is call the function that we created, player rotation, in our update method of our player class. So I'll just type self.player underscore rotation. So if we run this now, let's see what we get. So as you can see, the player is facing the mouse and the movement and everything else is working fine as well. So before we move on to the shooting, I do want to draw the player's rectangles. So the player rect rectangle and the hitbox rectangle, just to show you what they look like. And it might be a good idea for you to do this as well because um, you might encounter some bugs later and being able to see the rectangles might make it easier to debug them. So I'm just going to type in pygame.draw.rect. I want to draw it onto the screen and I want it to be red. And first I'll type player.hitbox underscore rect and I'll set the width to two. I'm just going to copy this line down. And I'll make this rectangle yellow and I'll change this to player.rect. And if we run this again, we should be able, we should be able to see um, the rectangle. So as you can see, we have a static rectangle, the, which is the red one, and a yellow rectangle, which is uh, moving as I'm rotating. And the static one, the red one, is the hitbox rectangle. And that's what we're going to check for collisions be uh, with. So uh, collisions with the walls and other objects in the game. And we're just using the yellow rectangle to blit the player rectangle, uh, the player's image onto the screen. I would also like to show you why it's important to rotate the base player image. Um, so if we replace this with image and we would try to generate the rotated versions from this image, not the original image, and we run it, let's see what happens. So as you can see, the quality of our image uh, degrades. So I'll just close that. Um, and you can also get lots of other weird bugs, like your player can just fly off the screen and all sorts of weird things can happen. So just make sure that you do generate the rotated images from the original base player image. And to do that, we created this variable um, basically to store this data so we don't lose it. I'm going to leave it there for this part. And in the next part, we will be implementing player shooting 
and we'll be working on our bullet class. But as always, all the code and assets will be in the description for you to download. And if you have any suggestions for the series or anything that you would like to see, then do let me know down in the comment section below. And please don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this useful and I'll see you in the next one.